Therefore, the thought, because bad thoughts come to the heads of bad people. So this man, he told that because the Prophet Ali is alone, his companions are busy doing something else. Now is my chance to Mu'azallah attack the Prophet So then he said that, may I be killed by Allah if I am unable to kill Muhammad So this was the intense hatred he had. This is the intense anger he had towards the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he seen this, he came from the mountain, he moved towards the Messenger of Allah with the sword in his hand. And he spoke, raising the sword over his head. And he put the sword over the head of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, now who will save you from me? So now imagine the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam is resting. And this non-Muslim at that time, he has this sword over the head of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasalam and he is saying that who will save you from me today? And the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasalam, look at the level of tawakkul of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said that Allah will save me from you. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will save me from you. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had just said these words that Sayyidina Jibreel Alayhi salam landed immediately on the earth and gave that man a punch in his chest, causing the sword to fall from his hand onto the ground. And the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam picked the sword up and then asked that, Now who will save you from me? And that man replied, No one can save me from you. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam had a very merciful heart, he had a very delicate heart towards the things which needed mercy. So he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa took pity on that individual, that man who came to kill the Messenger of Allah. Imagine if somebody came to hurt you or your family, and then the tables turned, and now you were the dominant one, you were the man in position, you were the man in power. Ask yourself what you would do to that individual. What did the Prophet alayhi salam did? The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam not only forgave him for his mistake, but the Prophet gave his soul back to him as well. Allahu Akbar. Look at the level of tawak, look at the power of Rasulullah. The man came to kill him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He dropped his sword, the Prophet forgave him and gave his soul back. It is as if the Prophet is saying that you guys can try whatever you want to try. You can go to as many extents as you want to go. Allah is my savior. Allah is my protector. Allah will help me. You guys can't do anything. And this is the tawakkul we need to have in our hearts. That if we know Allah can protect us, if we know Allah can save us, we should believe in that. Sometimes difficulties happen in a person's life. Sometimes he goes through a tough time. Sometimes there are issues in his life, domestic life, family, children, parents, anything, business. Who do we resort to? Do we go crying to our friends? Do we go complaining to people? Do we go to this person and that person? Do we go to fake people? Or do we turn to Allah? Do we put the mat down, the prayer mat? We sit on the prayer mat, we raise our hands in the court of Allah, and we say, Ya Allah, you are the one that can help us through this difficulty. Ya Allah, you are the one that can cure my illness. Ya Allah, you are the one who can make this situation straight again. Ask yourself that, that the last time you were in difficulty, when did you make sincere dua to Allah? There's one thing saying, Ya Allah, help me. But when sincerity that you know that no one else is looking, no one else is listening, no one else is there, I am asking my Rabb for help. I am asking my Allah for help. I'm not asking anybody else. When was the last time you did this? Not necessarily, you don't have to be in a position of difficulty to ask Allah. When was the last time you generally thanked and asked Allah to give you more? Sometimes when Allah gives us something, we become comfortable. We don't, we don't ask Him anymore. So ask yourself that. If Allah has granted me so much, Allah has granted me health, children, everything. Do I need to stop asking Him now? Well, has, has His treasure finished? No, Allah's treasure is never finished. The more Allah gives, the more Allah gives. The more you ask, the more He gives. You can get tired of asking, but Allah will not get tired of giving. Your pockets will become full, but Allah's treasures will never become empty. He is a Rabb, Rabbul Alameen. He is the Rabb of the universes. He is the Rabb of the... He is the Rabb of everything and anything. He is Allah. So ask Him. And the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam returned his sword back to him as well. And that man, he was so impressed with the Prophet Sallallahu mercy. He was so impressed with the good manners of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. He accepted Islam. 
he asked the Messenger of Allah that, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remove this dirt of kufr from my heart. Remove this dirt of disbelief from my heart and let me enter the beautiful religion that you are preaching. And then that man, uh, he accepted Islam. And this man, when he came back to his people, he didn't just tell them that he's accepted Islam, but he started to preach the religion of Allah. He started to tell them about Islam. He started to preach about Islam. Tere akhlaq par qurban, tere awsaf par bari. Musalman ke aduf bi tera kail ya Rasulullah. That, ya Rasulullah, may I be sacrificed on your good manners and nice attributes. Not only your followers, but enemies also are impressed by your good manners and nice attributes. The Prophet ﷺ had the power to do whatever he wanted to that man. But the Prophet forgave him. He showed a good character towards him. And good character and good manners is the topic of today. And it is a very uh, beautiful habit of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet had very beautiful conduct towards people. And there are many ahadith uh, which mention this as well. It is mentioned in Shu'bul Iman, Hadith 8054, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you cannot please people by your wealth. This is a very beautiful Hadith. The Prophet says you cannot please people by your wealth. You know, sometimes a person thinks that I've got so much money, I've got this car, I've got this watch, I've got this, these properties. But like no one's happy with me, no one wants to be around me, no one's... No one's my, like, true to me, no one's real to me. And the Prophet tells us this, the Prophet says that you cannot please people by your wealth, but your cheerfulness and good manners can please them. Allahu Akbar, ask yourself this, that if you've got a group of friends, and one of them, he is always smiling, he's always cheerful, he's always got good manners, he's never rude to people, he's always showing respect. And on the other hand, this man, he's got money, but he disrespects you with that money. He makes you feel low. He makes you feel like you're dead. He makes you feel like you, you, you're not on his level because you don't have his wealth. You tell me towards who's, who is your heart inclined towards? Undoubtedly, it's that man who's cheerful, who's happy, who possesses good manners, who shows uh, beauty towards you, beauty in his conduct, beauty in his manner. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ was getting at, that you cannot buy people with your money. You can use people with your money, but you can't truly buy people with your money. You can truly buy people with your character, with your good manner, with your cheerfulness, with your, with your akhlaq. Allahu Akbar, the hadith in Sunan Tirmizi. I want you to ask you a question, and then we'll come on to the hadith. What do you think will be the heaviest action on the scale of deeds? So on the Day of Judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weighs your good deeds against your bad deeds, and whichever side is heavier will determine your outcome, which deed of yours do you think will weigh the heaviest on that day? Is it your prayers? Is it your fast? Is it your zakat? Is it the charity you have given to people? Is it you getting up in the middle of the night to pray? Is it fasting every Mondays and Thursdays? Listen to this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, on the day of judgment, there will be no deed that weighs heavier on the scale of deeds of a believer than good manners. Allahu Akbar. That your akhlaq, your beautiful character, your beautiful manners, the way you conduct with people will weigh the heaviest from your actions on your weighing scale. What does this tell you about Husni Akhlaq? What does this tell you about good manners? That the Prophet is propagating, the Prophet is promoting it to such an extent, he's saying that there will be no deed heavier than this on the Day of Judgment. So we should try to adopt good character. We should try to adopt good manners. You know, openly speaking, well not openly, but the times we live in now, we think it's cool to be rude. We think, because if you act like a bad man, people respect us. We think if I speak a certain way, people will uh, have respect for us. We think if we uh, have disrespect towards elders, this is very common within our community, which is very bad, especially within our uh, Muslim community that sometimes our youngsters nowadays, they have no respect for the elders. They have no respect whatsoever. 
the same filth they're using to speak to their friends with, they're using the same filthy tongue to speak to the elders. Remember, there's many narrations and there's many sayings that are on the lines of that if you do not respect the elderly, there will be no one to respect you and your elder as well. And if you respect someone older than you in this time now, Allah will cause uh, people to respect you when you're older. It's very bad. It's, it's a disgusting thing that our youngsters today have no respect for the elders. I'm not just talking about parents. I'm talking about on the streets. You're walking and there's, a, there's an uncle and an auntie come in and you're there uh, doing your bad habits in front of them. You're swearing to each other. You're causing a havoc. You're causing a chaos. Why? To act cool? It's not cool. I'm telling you it's not cool. You look like fools. You look like idiots doing this. The Prophet Alaihi Wasallam said, the best amongst you and the one who will be the most favorite to me and who will be the most nearest to me on the day of judgment will be the one whose manners are the best from you. Allahu Akbar. Today we want to make space in the hearts of people. Today we want to uh, impress people. Try impressing people with your good character. It's easier said than done. It's very hard to maintain good character, to have good manners. I remember, you know when you act in a certain way, when you do certain things, people, they point fingers at your parents. They say, this is how such and such a person has raised him. They say, he's, son, he's the son of such and such a person. They say, is this the tarbiyat your parents have done of you? And imagine how your parents must feel if they ever got to hear that because of his son's character and his manners on the road, on the streets, people are pointing fingers at us. People are questioning our parenthood. Don't do this. Don't bring this shame upon your parents. Always respect your elders. If you have something you want to say to them, say it in a good manner. If, you're, if it's a valid thing, they will listen to it. And the elders should respect this as well. That when children come and speak to you, give them that level of respect they deserve. Don't think because he's younger than you that will just brush his uh, uh, point away. No. This causes insecurities in that child's heart. This will call that child to, child to go away from you. But if your child comes to you, or if any elder, uh, a younger person comes to you, and he, ex he expresses his feelings, he, he tells you something, he tells you his concern, uh, listen to it attentively. Show him that he's important. Show him that he's heard. Show him that his uh, words have value. Because if you turn him away, he won't come to you again. he loses respect for you. So respect is two ways. You give respect and you get respect. But the Prophet said that you respect those who don't even respect you. Meaning you treat good to those people who are even bad to you. This is the highest level of Iman. The hadith in Sunnah Abi Dawood that the Prophet ﷺ said, the perfect believer in Iman, in faith, are those who have good manners. Allah Akbar, we all strive to be the best. We all strive to be perfect. Especially as Muslims, we should strive to be the best form of ourselves. Allah has given us one life. Allah has given us one chance. Allah has laid the rules out in front of us. Allah has even given us a visual example of how the best of, how a person should be at his peak in the form of the Messenger Sallallahu in, in the form of the majestic one Sallallahu and he had the most perfect Iman in the whole universe, in the whole creation. There was no one's Iman. There is no comparison. I'm not even going to try. There is no comparison with the Iman of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam and everyone else's. And the Prophet said that I have been sent to complete good character. The Prophet stressed highly upon good character. And this is something that we need to adopt as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by a man that, what is good character? What is good manners? And he, alayhi salatu was salam, recited the following verse of the Quran, translation of Kanzul Iman. O beloved Rasul, adopt forgiveness and command to do good and turn away from the ignorant ones. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi said to me, should I not guide you about the good manners of the people of the past and the future? I humbly said, Ya Rasulullah, please do guide me about this. Tell me about the good manners of the people of the past and the future. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Bestow upon the one who deprives you. Forgive the one who oppresses you. 
and establish relations with the one who breaks off relations with you. Allahu Akbar, it seems like the Prophet ﷺ said very, very difficult things in today's society. Bestow upon the one who deprives you. Is it not the case that if we go to somebody's wedding and we remember, oh, this guy never gave us an envelope on our wedding, we're not going to give him an envelope. Very basic and small and petty thing. Or if uh, we're not going to go to a certain person's birthday because he never came to our birthday. Or we're not going to go to a certain person's uh, function or invitation because, or dawah because they never came to ours. No, bestow, give to people, go to it. Even if they did you wrong, forgive the one who oppresses you. Allah, this is a very difficult one. Forgive the one who oppresses you. When you were in a weak state, when you were in a delicate state, that person took advantage of that. But now you have the chance to stand up on your feet. What are you going to prioritize? Are you going to prioritize the desire of your ego and want to take a revenge from that individual? Or are you going to forgive him for the sake of Allah? That it is the commandment of Allah through the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that forgive to even the ones who oppress you. What are you going to prioritize? Are you going to prioritize the word of God, the word of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or are you going to let your nafs, your ego get the better of you for those split seconds? What happens most of the time if someone does this wrong? We'll end up swearing at him. We'll end up saying a few bad things. In extreme cases, we might end up hitting that individual. But imagine you kept your cool for that few minutes. It's few minutes. Look, if I ask you, are you still angry about the thing which happened last week, or happened last month, or happened last year? Unless it's an extremely big thing, you'll be like, I can't remember what happened. You forget about things. You forget about it. But in that moment when you had the chance to say something, but you controlled your tongue for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward you for that. And the third thing, establish relations with the one who breaks off relationship with you. Today over property, over wealth, over minor things, a brother says to his brother, you're no longer my brother. A person leaves his house, he says, I ain't got nothing to do with you guys anymore. This is the society we live in. People disown their own mothers. Allah, so sad. Your mother who raised you, your mother who looked after you, your mother who's done everything, her whole life is for you. And now when she needs you, you leave her. Oh, you have an argument with your mother, you have an argument with your parent, and you say, I, I'm done with this. You forget all the favors, and you don't, you don't have the self-respect and the self-worth to come back and apologize to him, to, to join those connections again. You're saying, my mom should come to me and apologize. Astaghfirullah. My dad should come to me and apologize. Astaghfirullah. No, they're older, they're your parents, they're your doors to his paradise. Respect them and honor them. And if somebody has broken ties in your family, uh, uncles, cousins, etc., and there is no Sharia, Islamic ruling to keep you away from each other, then make the first step, take the first step, go to them, tell them, be close to them. It has a very high status in the court of Allah. Once the prisoners of the tribe Tay were brought to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and a girl prisoner stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, she said, O oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you consider it better to free me and do not make the tribes of Arab laugh at me because I am the daughter of Hatim, the chief of my tribe, undoubtedly my father used to support his tribe. He freed prisoners, he used to give food to the hungry, he used to spread salam, and never let any needy person go back without fulfilling his need. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh girl, this is the attribute of those who have true faith. If your father had been a Muslim, I would have made dua of mercy for him. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, free this girl because his father used to like good manners and Allah Azza wa Jal also likes good manners. And I swear by the one in whose power my soul is in, only well-mannered people will enter paradise. Mere akhlaq achhe ho, mere sab kaam achhe ho, bana do mujko tum paabandi sunnati ya Rasulallah. That my character uh, becomes good, my actions become good, that ya Rasulallah, make me a person who follows your sunnah. Because when an individual follows the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he can never go wrong. He can never not be heard. He can never be mocked. 
because the person who adopts the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, a person who wants to make his life like the life of Rasulullah he will be elevated in this world and the hereafter. Don't think because I haven't got good manners, I've got nothing to lose, no. Bad manners are, they're like a curse in this world. You'll have people who have bad manners and they don't have anybody around them, they don't have anybody who wants to be around them. And then they get sad about the fact that I'm very lonely. And one of the reasons these people are lonely is because of their manners. That if they had good manners, Allah would be pleased with them. And whoever Allah is pleased with, the people become pleased with them. As you surely know of that famous hadith, that when Allah becomes pleased with someone, Allah becomes radi, Allah becomes happy with someone, Allah calls Jibreel. And Allah says to Jibreel, oh Jibreel, I am happy with this man, you become happy with him. Then Jibreel goes and makes an announcement in the angels that, oh angels, Allah is pleased with him, I am pleased with him, you all become pleased with him. Allahu Akbar. And then they go and make an announcement in the whole world that Allah is pleased with him, Jibreel is pleased with him, the Malaika are pleased with him, or the creation of Allah, you become pleased with him. And when, they, when every single person's heart has been turned towards that individual, Allah will elevate him. Allah will grant him more than he ever wanted. Allah will grant him more than he could ever need. And this is all because of good character. Why? Because good character pleases Allah. Good character takes you closer to Allah. We should also try to work on our character. It's difficult. Sometimes we have certain habits that uh, we've had those habits for a very long time. We feel it's impossible to give up. But try. If you truly want to be a better person, if you truly want to be that person about, about whom the Messenger of Allah has mentioned all of these great attributes and qualities, then you need to try to better yourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who better ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive any mistakes that have been made. Ameen bijahin nabi al ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad. صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم